So let's find some IDs and some ID refs here, and let's play around with them to see exactly how they work. So down here under info type, I have some articles, and up here under about, I have some sources. So here's my articles and here's my sources. So let me close those up so that they're easy to see. Okay, notice articles have, I mean items have IDs and sources have IDs. Um, and what we said before is that the ID must be unique. It must be unique within the entire instance among any of the other IDs in the instance. So for example, I can't have two items with the same ID. Right? And, X, and um, Oxygen knows that. It flags that second one and says there are multiple occurrences of the ID in AENG. Just like we expect, that's a good thing. I put it back to a unique one, everything's okay. Same thing goes in the sources. If I have two sources with the same ID, it breaks again. And we see that it's telling us that you can't have two IDs of the same kind. Now, here's the, here's the sticker. always get back to goodness. Okay, so now here's the sticker, and let me close these back up again to make this easy to see. What if I take this ID and I give it this source? Is that okay or not okay? Will that cause a validation error, or will that be acceptable as a good thing to do? Think about it, and now let me do it. And what happens? The second one is called invalid, because the fact that one is a source ID and one is an item ID is of no consequence to the validation error. It says I have two IDs somewhere in the instance that have the same value, and that's not okay. So I'm going to change that back, and it's fixed again. Now, don't get, um, don't get hung up too much on the fact that the attribute is called ID. If the source had an attribute called identifier or you know uniqueness or whatever I wanted to call it, and it had the data type of ID, the same thing would have happened. This is not about the name of the attribute. This is about the data type of the attribute. If there was an element somewhere, and by the way, elements and attributes can all have can have the same data types. So there's no data types that are unique to one or the other. I can assign an ID data type to an attribute, which is my convention, which I like to do, or I could assign it also to an element if I wanted to. If I assigned it to an element, that element also would be part of the set that the validation engine looks at to decide whether or not there's a duplicate or not. So don't get hung up on the fact that it says ID, and so it must be an ID. The ID is the name of the attribute. I could have called it anything I wanted, and it could still be an ID. Okay, so that's IDs. The ID has to be unique. It has to be a unique string across all the other things, attributes and elements that have the ID data type. Luckily for you guys in this course, you'll only see one thing that has the ID data type, and that's an attribute called ID. So in other places in the world, you may very well see elements with weird names that have an ID data type. In this course, the only thing with an ID data type is going to be called an ID, and it's going to be an attribute. That's pretty much my standard for doing it so that I don't get messed up. You can imagine how that could be really confusing. Okay, so that's IDs. Let's talk about ID refs. Anything in this class that's an ID ref data type, you'll see has this worded ref ID. So if you see an attribute or an element and it says ref ID in it somewhere, then it's a then it's a it's not an ID uh, data type. It's an ID ref data type. And so the, usually the usually the first part of the word says what it's a reference to. This is a reference from an item to a source. And in fact, this is a news article, and this is the source of the news article. Right? This one came from the Sydney Morning Herald. And that's what this means. That's what's being forged by this link. The ref ID is the thing that's forging the link. It's making a link between this item and this source so that I don't have to repeat all the information that's in the source. I can just point to the source and then later on, using the ID of the source, uniquely find this element and make sure that I, got, that I can get out the full name or the URL or anything that I want from that source. Okay, so now let's play around with how these ID refs work. What's the thing about an ID ref data type? The thing about an ID ref data type is that it must have a value that is a unique ID that is that is in the ID set of that instance. So right now we have SSMH. Here it is right up here, SSMH. But let me do this. Suppose I try referring to SSMHX. Is that going to be okay? 
Well, that's not okay. That's not okay because there is no S S M H X in here, and it says that much. It calls it the binding, but you get the idea. There's no ID ref, or there's no ID called S S M H X. Now, how about if I use if I capitalize it wrong? Is that okay? Nope. Has to be exactly as it's typed. Capitalization included. Okay, so the source ref ID here S S M H has to point to a valid ID. Now the question I have for you is does it have to point to a valid source ID or does it have to point to any ID regardless of whether it's a source ID or a not source ID. To test that I'm going to do something kind of weird here. I'm going to copy the ID of the item itself and paste it in this reference and when I do is that going to be okay or is that going to be bad? I paste it in there and lo and behold as far as the validation engine is concerned, that's okay. Now that's really a logical weird thing to say that this item has itself as a source. I mean you can make up some weird logic for why that might be true, but the fact remains that uh, an ID ref data type really only has to have an ID from somewhere in the instance. The ID, data, the ID ref data type doesn't really have an idea about where that ID has to come from. I'd love to actually add that as a rule into the validation engine. You can specify for the ID ref what the element is that needs to have that ID. And that would be nice because then it would give you an extra level of validation. Right now we have a really weird bug inside of our, um, inside of our instance and it would be hard to find with the validator because the validator doesn't know the difference. So this is something we're going to have to enforce above the rules of validation. And we have no method to do that in this class, but if you continue on with this stuff, you'll write programs and the programs will create levels of validation beyond even what a schema can do. All right, so let's review this. Um, uh, items, uh, excuse me, IDs have to be unique among all the ID elements inside an instance. Source uh, ref IDs have to point to a valid have to point to a valid um, ID in the instance. Now let me do a couple other things. Let's take NAing and what happens if I put NAing as a title? Is that a problem? Because NAing is supposed to be unique? Oops. Is it a problem to have NAing as the title because NAing is supposed to be unique? No, in fact it isn't. The uniqueness applies only to the elements and attributes whose data type is ID. So putting it in a title, putting it anywhere else in the, in the um, instance is just fine as long as you don't put it another time as an ID. Okay, how many times can NAing appear in this instance as an ID? Once. How many times can NAing appear in this instance outside of IDs? As many times as you want. How many times can SSMH apply, appear as a source ref ID? As many times as you want. How many times can it appear in the text? As many times as you want. Okay, so let's look at let's look at that last set of statements because that may be the hardest for you to understand. Um, look down this list, and you'll see that all of these items all come from the same place. That place happens to be Al Jazeera. These are all articles from Al Jazeera, um, and they're all pointing to the same source, which makes complete sense, right? There are a bunch of articles, but they all have the same source. It's really not logically problematic to have as many ref IDs pointing to the same ID as you want, but it is logically prob problematic to have more than one instance of an ID uh, in different items, because then we wouldn't be able to tell one item apart from the others that share the same ID. Okay, well that was a lot of, that was a lot of um, heavy thinking, and um, uh, I hope that you come back around to this idea of IDs and ID refs as many times as you need to until it really sinks in. It's really an important one because the IDs are our major way of recognizing an information item as a specific information item. Um, uh, and ID refs are our major way of including those information items in access structures. And so you'll see as we begin to work with access structures that we use those ID refs over and over again to refer to the items that are organized, for example, under a certain index term or under a certain um, uh, hierarchy node.